Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kastuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Stupid Us. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to Friday. It's fly. Friday's fly day. Fly with me, Mara, and Kostuba. Woohoo! American Airlines, direct to New Delhi. That's what we're doing this evening. That's what our evening looks like. And yes, I was supposed to be at Grandma Terry's today. I just had too much to do, including planting three new raspberry bushes. Oh. By the way, I meant to tell you this morning, we also have a blueberry <laughs> bush that needs to be planted. Oh, that's the other side. I was. I know I thought they all got planted, but there's one by the tomatoes. All right. Look, Maya's raising her hand. I'll plant it. Will you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can we count on that? We count on that. She's very good. She's very. Okay, good. you're wearing the 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 scoop neck today. You got that Probably out. Someone's got to do it. Someone's got to represent. And I see you're just like rubbing your chest. And it's like you well, know what? I realize I'm I'm like some type of like bear. I'm trying to draw attention life. to it. I Maybe it was like one of Hanuman's friends. Because I'm always <laughs> itching, scraping, scrubbing, <laughs> scratching, rubbing my back against the pillar. It's fine. That's okay. But when you're wearing the scoop, it's just, it's, you know, it's just get off too much. much. Don't critique my bosom, <laughs> bosom scratching <laughs> on, on the air. <laughs> but you're like doing it on the air. Thousand people don't don't even see it. It's just these like uh, sixty-seven people do. I don't talk about it. You know, and there, okay. a lot of them here aren't even looking. Okay, I'm not going to talk about it. Okay, what's going on with you? Are you ready for India? Are you packed? I'm not packed yet, but that's um, you got some goodies like for the plane. I will have some goodies for the you plane. Share them. What kind of goodies do you pack? What do you eat? When you you want to trade? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Is Mara bringing down some goodies? Mara's got some goodies. Yeah, for me. I'll bring down some goodies. Yeah, yeah of course, because you... All right. Thank She's you, the goodie girl. Nice. What do you What are you gonna pack seriously for food? What are you pairing like? A couple sandwiches. Um, corn, nut, corn nuts. No, I don't like that kind of stuff. <laughs> corn, nuts. corn nuts. Why would you even say this? I don't know. I like them. <laughs> <laughs> It's something anyway. you travel. Isn't it weird? Like when you travel, you're sort of like, uh, okay, I'm gonna eat anything before anything. It's like I gotta eat. I you never yeah, know. Yeah. What, well, you never know this, when your next meal is gonna come. I gotta shove my mouth with food. It, yeah, and you really don't. It actually makes you feel crummy. It makes. I, you feel, uh, of course, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I discovered any, that I eat for any other reason except hunger. You know, on a really long flight like this, you got to bring some food. But um, mostly, I just bring some I eat at the airport before I fly. And you don't need too much after that. You know? Yeah. I used to, it, when I was a brahmachari, I used to fast when I flew the entire way to India. And then look at you. I would not watch movies. Very, very strict. I was very strict. I've weakened. Rigid but, brahmachari you were. Yes, but Staunch. um, but actually, I don't watch that many movies, do I, Mira? Uh, 
No, but partly because you fall asleep as soon as they start. <laughs> it's not that. I don't. I just don't watch movies on the plane. I, I practice Hindi. I listen to books. I read a little bit. Okay. I sleep a lot. I'm a very good plane sleeper. All right. I'm looking forward to meeting you, hooking up and uh, heading on out there. We'll yeah, see you guys fun. in the afternoon. huh? Yeah. Going to the airport together. Yeah. All right. Enough of that. <laughs> What else is up? Uh, the show, we're doing the show right now. It's the only we turn, turn to Mara at this point and ask her about if she has any announcements. Yeah, we got a back to your cover group meetings today at 1230 and at one o'clock. And uh, the Cult of Kane, Josh Kane's asana class for our Patreon members is today at 1030 a.m. And there'll be no show tomorrow because we'll all be traveling, but we'll be back on Sunday live from, well, we'll be live from Delhi. You'll be in uh, Mayapur, Prabhu? That's right. Yeah, at uh, the usual time, 8 a.m. on Sunday. All right. Uh, We're going to ask, like, what? <laughs> <Am I> sp- <laughs> Did we agree to that? Yes, you agreed to it. Sunday. Okay, let's do this. People. That'll be fun. That'll be our Q&A day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, maybe we'll have some live, live Q&As. But that, I don't know if that, you want to make that a live, live Q&A. Is it- well, people are showing up. Your group will be there? In India. Well, a lot of people are going early. All right, but you'll have to get their questions. I know how the game works. <laughs> but will you remember? <laughs> I know how this works. This ain't my first rodeo, Kostuba. Right. Okay. Listen what we got here. We got some quotes by one of your favorites. Who's that? Miss Emily Post. Oh, Emily Post. Yes. She wrote, um, uh, what was that book she wrote? Miss American Matters. author, novelist, socialite. A socialite. Uh, is that even a job? Can can you claim that to be a job? I guess that's the equivalent of an influencer now. I'm socialite? a socialite. I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly what a socialite is. You know what it, what it really implies. It's like being the it kid in high school. Socialite. Let's look it up here. Is Mary on it? You got it, Mary. Yeah, I'm on it. Thank God. Socialite. She was famous for writing about etiquette. A socially prominent person. Socially, yeah, it's kind of like an socially influencer, prominent. I guess. Yeah, a socialite. Maybe socialite. I could, I'm I'm sort of socially prominent. I could put that on my. I mean, she put it on her bio. Why can't I put it on mine? <laughs> Rocking on through the socialite, a part-time Mason. Socially, he's socially prominent. Okay, what does she have to say to it's us today? Socially inappropriate. Emily Post. Do people even know about her anymore? No. Like, well, she wrote a book of manners. That like this. Manners. It's like the gold standard for what manners is. Like, which size fork do you use? And you know, like, do you put your elbows on the table or, you know, hold the chair out for somebody? Right. Yeah. Uh, she wrote all she wrote a lot about etiquette. That was yeah, her main thing. I think you, you you would you would uh, consult Emily Post to find like what's the proper etiquette. OK, anyway, this is what she said. She, what you got, Mara? What you got, Mara? Well, for anyone about etiquette. So that's- Mary, you molasses. What's going on, Mary? What are you looking for? All right. Emily Post, do you want to know the books? Now the website won't. Oh, the books you wrote? Let's hear. Um, Emily Post Etiquette. (laughs) That's what it's called. That's the book. (laughs) Keep it simple. (laughs) There's also Higher Etiquette. Higher Etiquette. That's the 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 next book. You you know, you had to have a follow up. Capitalize on the success of the first one. <laughs> Essential manners for men. Oh, that's the one, Roganaz. We, you and I, we got to study that together. You're pretty polite. Essential so. manners for couples. <laughs> that's so not what you tell me. Well, <laughs> all the time. Couples. Well, me and Mara started dating. I chose to. From now on, I'm holding the door open for her when she gets in the car. Okay. I want to be that guy, and I'm pretty good at it. Has Has he been? Yeah, most of the time he does that. What's That's the nice. percentage? Seventy-five percent. Fifty-one. I'll give you seven. <laughs> okay, that's a C plus in holding the doors open. Uh, okay, what does Emily have to tell us? She says nothing is less important than which fork you use. Oh, well, that's nothing surprising less... to hear from her, right? Because yeah. she wrote books about that stuff. It's funny fork. I, I said about forks. Nothing is less important than which fork to use. Etiquette is the science of living. Oh. It embraces everything. It is ethics. It is honor. Okay. 
so so in other words it's it's not like there's inherent meaning in the details necessarily but it's about how you honor people right but what is what else does she have to say manners are sensitive awareness of the feelings of others okay that's that's i like that if you have that awareness you have good manners no matter what fork you use okay, i like how she ties fork, in the yeah. fork again because yeah, so that, that was a big part of, of her forks. thing which fork to use which fork is does the big one go on the outside or the inside all that kind of stuff i think outside <laughs> i'm not trying to i'm not even asking you putting just, me on the hot seat <laughs> no i wasn't asking you. i was just saying these are the questions that people get caught up in she's saying they're for a higher purpose right? sure sure um i have not much else to say about this really um i always hated this truthfully i was sort of like the rebellious i don't want to follow why i have anything who made you up like that? a maverick were you well i was i was like why why can't i have my elbows on the table and when i first went to india and i saw everyone sitting on the floor eating with their hands i was like yes yes <laughs> i was right but they have they etiquette there hands. too what's that i know it yeah. i know then I realized I started to appreciate etiquette because etiquette serves a higher purpose. I guess I, I'm thinking like Emily Post. How has it? Well, you said it after her, so it doesn't count when you do it that way. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was but, um, thinking I was, I was I was running all through this through my mind. Why do we sit in a line? Why do we sit on the floor? Why do we use our hand? Yeah. Why do we use our right hand, not our left hand? That's all etiquette. Um, yes, I is. guess what I didn't like about Emily Post was she there was like there was the gold standard of how you have to do it. And and th this is the problem with rituals when you don't understand the meaning underneath the rituals. It's just like, why are you telling me this? Why should I do this? What if someone explained the higher purpose behind it? If I had Emily Post explaining these rituals, I might have respected it more. But when I went yeah. to India, they all they explained everything. This is why we sit on the floor. This is why we eat with our hands. You know what I mean? Well, why? Tell me, how's it how's it helped you in your life? <laughs> how's it helped me? Yeah. Well, how's there's everything you from, you know, the simple. Uh, first of all. Let's see. How has it helped me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give eating you with me. your hand has something to do with the the touching of the food. That, stimulates that, the, the, the digestive not fire. That's oh, not wow. etiquette, but it's it's it, there's a reason. The left hand, because you try to like oh, cool. see okay. the body. Now you're just going off into other. Now you're going to Ayurveda. Let's. So what? Let's talk That's to... part of etiquette. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> now, what here? Here's something about etiquette, right? Let's go to the okay. basic, fundamental stuff that you read again and again and again in these books, right? What? Well, let me before we go there. Let's talk about this, Raghun. It's kind of like remember a couple weekends ago we had a question. That had to do with like having a temple in your home and is it okay to have the to have the altar in your living room where the television is and, and right. th you know that kind of thing you know i think etiquette is a, is a similar thing where it's just like within it's funny because the puja that we do the ritual that we do it's all etiquette isn't it it's basically how to gr greet a guest coming to your home yeah let me offer you all kind of comforts because how to coronate a king similar because because i respect you because i because i i want to honor you i want to i want i want my mind to not take you for granted and i and if because if i do it actually stunts my growth right if we don't appreciate what's special we don't really grow mm -hmm. and so within our ritual they have you know what they call seva opera different different considerations for doing it right so that you keep sake so you keep that focus of your meditation sacred in one sense etiquette is like keeping everyone sacred right how I, how I relate to everyone I want to recognize God is inside them they are special there's a unique spark of divine spiritual energy sure. and therefore the etiquette helps keep that focus and then within this um Vedic etiquette, you know, it, it, you could even just say traditional Indian etiquette, but it's certainly there woven in through the bhakti shastras that have basically informed all of Indian culture, right? From coming from Mahabharata, coming from Ramayana, coming from texts like Bhagavatam, that we see repeated again and again this idea of how juniors relate to seniors, how seniors relate to juniors, 
and how peers relate to one another. That becomes like a fundamental kind yeah. of like human um, code, you know, that that could seem superficial. Mm. But when you understand it, you, you really begin to understand how it makes you a better person and how it opens you up, how it opens up that channel, you know, for human connection and human growth and human sharing, you know, when juniors are always like, for instance, within our culture, the junior always shows respect to the senior. Right. It doesn't mean you have to do everything they say. It doesn't mean you can't question whether it doesn't or not, mean right. you might not even like them. You might not even like them. Yeah. Yeah. But. But it but, might be but, ornery. They might be, be ornery. ornery, but you still you should still show respect. It it, yeah. it actually really upsets me when I see people mean to older people. Yeah, talking back to older people, just like in the just street gotta, or something like that. You just have to honor the and, and you, so the idea was, but it's here's the deal: it's not only that the juniors are always respectful to the seniors, but the seniors are always affectionate to the juniors. Yeah, right. that doesn't always happen, but yeah. Well, it Sometimes doesn't, it doesn't happen, happen, happen the way you want it to either happen. Either way. Yeah. But you, you but you follow the etiquette anyway. And if you continue to follow that etiquette, they soften up. Right. And the interesting thing is, not only is it nice in your dealings, but it actually assists the flow, the trickle-down effect of bhakti yoga. That's the point. Yeah. That's, the, that's the point. It's meant to serve prema. It's meant to serve love of Godhead. That's right. It's, but it also is just nice. It's just a nice, appropriate way of dealing with people. Yeah. When you, when a senior is being treated with real respect from a junior, they mm. naturally want to share everything they have with that person. And, and if they're disrespectful, they're like, I don't, I can't share anything with them. Yeah. You know, there's, they, they, they won't get it. They won't understand it. It'll be a waste of my time. They don't appreciate me. Therefore, they're not going to appreciate what I'm saying. And it, and it's just kind of like a fruitless endeavor. You know, it was a big one for me to get over. Um, and you could probably get, you could probably figure this out because you know me too well. Is always tr like, Raghunath, shut up! Stop trying to give the senior advice. Stop talking. Play more dumb. Even if you know something, don't correct. It's just, well, there's a name for that. I forget what it is. <laughs> I'll try to look it up. Like. Like a buffoon? Well, no, um, no. There, there's, you see, because in the Bhagavatam, there was that time where Vidura, uh, you know, he went off on pilgrimage. Yeah, when Dridara or Duryodhana was criticizing him. Yeah, and then he met um, Uddhava, mm -hmm. and then he met Maitreya. Mm -hmm. And I think the way it worked was that... Um, I think Uddhava kind of deferred to Maitreya because he was senior. Right. And then there's a Sanskrit name for, for like the, 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 the um, neglect of etiquette when a junior kind of takes the role of instructor in front of a senior. It's, it's embarrassing. And it really disturbs the flow of Bhakti. And um, yeah, it's like, and because what happens is, the person doesn't want to pour out their heart to you. I've just learned to play. First of all, I don't have to play dumb very often. I'm just sort of <laughs> okay. a little dumb, but, I just to play. <laughs> but play dumber, play dumber. And then what happens is the person really wants to share as much. It, it, it sort of yeah. ripens the person to run it. Give more. The, 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 it opens the channel for that um, heart to heart connection, doesn't it? Yeah. And and if and if you don't, then every, everyone just kind of seals right up, you know. So there's that, you know. Um, I once was in some little Facebook conversation thread kind of thing, trying to be come enlightened, being in th th Facebook no, threads. But the question came up about blessings because I've seen in like, um, like in New Ageish yoga Western circles, blessings. Oh, yeah, oh, blessing. Yeah, like blessings. People are giving blessings all the time. But really, like in tr in the tradition, right? a junior would never bless as a senior. I know. They don't bless. No. <laughs> blessings. <laughs> New age people just say blessings all the time. Blessings. Blessings upon blessings, you. Yeah. Blessings, my child. 
<laughs> I'm yeah, older yeah. than you. Don't call me your child. And, and so, uh, you know, there was a, a devotee, and uh, I, I mentioned that, and then she said, do you have, like, a reference for that? Like, you know, huh. and I said, it's kind of like the references are everywhere, you know, but I did do a little bit of study on it. You know, I, I looked it up a little bit. You got it? Well, what I came up with was this, is that I say, you, you as you go through th these texts, Bhagavatam, Mahabharata, like that, uh, I said, um, I said that it becomes clear through studying these books in both the verses and the commentaries, one will consistently come across hundreds of examples where blessings are being given and received in the following ways. A senior is blessing a junior. A yogi is performing austerities to receive the blessings of a deva. Mm -hmm. A devotee is seeking or receiving the blessings of God. Mm. A guru is blessing a disciple. Um, the Lord is blessing a devotee. A teacher is blessing a student. You know, Dronacharya is blessing. You know, it, it's, yeah. There's so many. A brahmana sage is blessing a kshatriya king. A saint blesses the householder. A materialist seeks the blessings of a sadhu. So it's always kind of like, you know, superior to inferior, you could say, but like senior to junior. That's like always the direction. And we see that in Krishna's life, we see that you showed a nun to bless him because mm -hmm. they're his parents. Never the other way around. Krishna never blesses you showed, you know, he never mm -hmm. says, I bless you, you know. Another, uh, but then I, that, but then I looked this up. I thought this was interesting, Raghav. I looked at Srila Prabhupada's letters to different people and how he addresses them in the letters, the etiquette that he uses. I love how you research all this stuff. I did a little research, Raga. You did. Okay. So, um, yeah, could, could, how, you know, because there's certain etiquette in, in writing a letter, right? And so how did he address his god brothers? How did he address his disciples how, yeah, did he, how, did he, you know, how did he address his god brothers so so when he writes to his senior god brothers mm -hmm. he says my dear Sri madhava maharaj please accept my humble dandavats that's nice so that's 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 i'm um, bowing down before you i'm bowing down like a stick in front of you th th these are his god brothers but his senior god brothers right yeah. Dear Sri Pad Tirtha Maharaj, kindly accept my humble dandavats. Dear Sri Pad Ban Maharaj, please accept my humble dandavats. Interesting. Okay, now what about his sort of like more chummy, chummy ones? Well, what I have so, next is the disciples of his god brothers. They just, okay, interesting. So this nephews, is to nephews. Uh, do you remember Mongol Maharaj? Uh, only from that photo. Photo. He used to come to the West. He was a disciple of one of Prabhupada's god brothers, and he wanted to come to the West, but his guru wouldn't let him. You remember that? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. In any case, he wrote in this one, he says, Dear, my dear Brahmachari Mangalan, Mangalani Loy, please accept my hearty greetings. <laughs> accept my hearty greetings for your letter on the 11th instance. And I noted the contents carefully. And in another letter to the same person, he says, Please accept my dandavats. Huh. Okay. Is, okay. Well, next. I'm gonna send you that when I talk. To, hey, send my hearty greetings. My we don't even do anything. Now we just text with it starts with a a, a fist bump emoji. <laughs> you know, there's nothing official yeah. anymore. Yeah, yeah. We even took please accept my humble obeisances and turned it into Pam Ho. We, we Pam Ho. Things down. Um, okay, so that now he's writing I have some where he's writing to like senior elderly people that that are maybe older than him or in his age group, but because you're he's the a Emily Post of the Harry Krishna movement. Well, I'm just checking it out. I know but you're organizing it now. Okay, but it's bad etiquette to interrupt me <laughs> in the middle of a sentence. <laughs> well, I didn't read Emily. Even when Post. you're praising me <laughs> as the Emily Post of Bhakti, um, but, but okay, now he's writing to Sumati Murarji. That's the one who sponsored his uh, cargo boat trip. Right. Frosty. So she's probably older than him. Yeah. But he's the sannyasi. So it's a little kind of like in between, right? Yeah. Who's elder? Yeah. In one sense. But he, yeah. but he won't exactly offer her his blessing. But this is what he does. He says, um, Dear Sumati Muraji, by Shabha. By Shabha. 
Baishaiba. I guess it means like sister, right? Oh, yeah. I, I'm assuming. Put it on the board. Baishaiba. If you're, if we have Indians here that know, Baish, it sounds because like, like Bai means brother. Sahib means like, Baishaiba. Like a respected person or something. Bahin. Sister is, Bahen. What is Bahen? Sister Bahenji. Any case, dear Sumati Muraji. Okay. Please accept my greeting. And blessing of Lord Bala Krishna. Mm -hmm. I hope by the grace of Lord Sri Krishna, everything is well with you. So he's not, he's saying, I hope that you receive Krishna's blessing, but he's not saying, I bless you. Okay. You see, that, that so, so he, really he could practice because he's a sannyasi, you know, but he's not, he doesn't feel like unless someone has formally taken shelter of him, he's not like, I bless you. Right. right. Then he writes to another person, my dear sir, Parampat. Parampat. Please accept my greetings and the blessings of Sri Sri Dwarkadisha Maharaj. That's Krishna. I hope by Lord by the Lord's grace everything is all right with you. So, and you know, he also when he says Bala Krishna, you know, she's like a uh, Pushti Margi, you know, mm. Gujarati. Yeah. So uh, I'm pretty sure. So he he chooses. How do you their, sign your letters? He, how do I, who, I use, it depends who I'm writing to. You see, that's the whole point, right? Okay, okay. Okay, now, now listen, this, for his disciples, his standard greeting was, please accept my blessings. Right, you look at all his letters to his disciples, that's what he says, please accept my blessings. So this is what I wrote, I noted this down. The point is that from it's a, a very, traditional- That's a very nice thing to say. Please sure. accept my blessings. Yeah, in that, in that, in, in that particular relationship. But Prabhupada wouldn't take the that role with someone who hadn't formally right. um, approached him that way. Right. So I said I wrote the point is that from a traditional standpoint, it would be very awkward to hear a disciple say to a guru or a child say to a parent, please accept my blessings. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it's possible on occasion that out of humility a guru may say to his disciples something like, You all bless me. But it's understood as a display of great humility and the disciple would naturally feel the need to express their own subordinate position if they said something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Then there are many places in Shastra where this type of etiquette is clearly spelled out. For instance, when Krishna meets the Pandavas, he touches the feet of his seniors, Yudhishthira and Bhisha and Bhima, a gesture of seeking blessings. He embraced you, Arjuna, who Krish, was Krishna touched Bhima and Yudhishthira's feet. Yeah. Interesting. When he would meet them after some time being apart, he would touch their feet. With Arjuna, who was his peer, he embraced him. And he received and he received the touching of his feet from Nikula and Sahadev, who were his juniors. What's that? What does that sound like? <laughs> what is that? Like the Jeopardy <laughs> thing in his thinking time? <laughs> do, you, do you ever touch feet? Are you a feet toucher? On occasion, on rare occasion. I do it. I do it a lot. Well, I hope you don't cheapen it. I don't cheapen it. Okay. I just I'll do it a lot. I do it a lot to the appropriate people. Okay. <laughs> do, do, do the ladies touch the feet? Or is that like a... Of who? Of their guru. Um. Well, if their guru is a lady, I suppose. I mean, in well, India, the guru is a man. For sure. The guru is a man. In India, they touch You definitely feet. see the old ladies doing it. Yeah, I guess the old ladies doing it. Okay. okay. Henry so, says Pam Ho came from the time Iskon first got their first teletype machine and each word was expensive to send. Okay. That makes sense. So, oh, Pam. Please, oh, that's please Pam accept my humble obeisances. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Shrink it down. Quaid. Kelly Becker says Kostuba touched our feet in Italy. You're touching Kelly it? Becker's feet. You know what I think it was? I think it was when we we're having that big kirtan when that, that Karuna was leading. Something? No, I think maybe Karuna was leading kirtan and he had that like tunnel thing where all the devotees are going through the tunnel. Okay. Oh, that old tunnel dance. <laughs> yeah, that's right. She's saying yes. <laughs> and so I was right there, you know, I just kind of things got a little wild, you know. Touching that's, people's feet. You're crazy. Like, kirtan things can happen. You're so wild. <laughs> all right. Anyway, we're going to hear a little bit about etiquette because, um, Indra has to approach a younger person to become the priest, his priest. 
Mm-hmm. And well, there'll be questions of etiquette here. I mean, let's let's look into very this interesting. Narayanam namaskritya naram chayva narutamam devim saraswatim vyasam tato jayam diriyat. Before we start in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest? One should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan, unto Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta prayesho badreshu nityam bhagavat sevaya bhagavati uttama sloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki by regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees. All that is troublesome the heart will become eradicated and loving service to the Supreme Lord who is praised with transcendental songs will be established in the heart as an irrevocable fact. In the heart. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyanan Janasalakaya Chaksurun Madhutam Nena Tazmai Shri Gurave Maha I was born in the darkness of ignorance. And my teachers are opening my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. Yes, I'm etiquette. Reading from the Shema Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 7, Text 25. O oh, demigods, Read it? Okay. <laughs> so I'm waiting for you to butt in. Uh, oh, demigods, I instruct you to approach Vishvarup. Okay, hold it. Who this is, is Brahma speaking? speaking. Oh, thank you. This oh, is demigods. text what? Say, say the text number again. 25. 25, okay. I instruct you to approach Vishvarup, the son of Tvasta, and accept him as your guru. He is pure and very powerful Brahmana, undergoing austerity and penances. Please, by your worship, he will fulfill your desires, provided that you tolerate his being inclined to side with the demons. Oh, so they lost their guru. They offended their guru. The guru split. Yeah. And now they they need a guru. They need a director, a director. They need a GPS, so to speak. And they're life. getting beat down. Right. They, they're bleeding and suffering right now. The, 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 the Asura has gained power. Hmm. Okay. It's the last thing we want in our culture. We don't. I don't need a guru. I'm my own guru. Be your own guru. <laughs> <laughs> bogus <It's> like, gurus. <laughs> bogus gurus. <laughs> so, guru. There are plenty of bogus gurus around. Though, so there are. There are. Yeah. So, so he. But he's saying, go and approach this person. He's going to help you. But listen, just let's take note of this because this is going to become important. He said he can he can fulfill your desires. And again, that's part of Indra's problem is that he's maintaining material desires, right? He's going to guru, not just for pure devotion. He's going to guru because he needs material help. And he's saying he's going to help you. He can fulfill your desires. But then he says this, and this is a bit of a call for deeper maturity on the part of, of Indra, provided you can tolerate his being inclined to the side with the demons. So in other words, this is a person that comes from a family that you're not into, right? He's, he's being born in a dynasty that you bear hostility towards. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, don't let that hostility get in your way of honoring this person properly. Um, he can help you, but you're going to have to be a bit m- more mature. You know, the, this, the, this, we've, we've been reading about how real sadhus, you know, Indra, he's got no problem, right? Indra's like, he's on the Deva side over there, really, right? But he's got, he doesn't reject someone just because they're from this other family. But can Indra think like that? Let's see. Let's <laughs> see how this unfolds. How will it unfold? Okay. Um, thus advised by Lord Brahma and relieved of their anxiety. All the demigods went to the sage Vishvarup, the son of Tvasta. Tvasta. My dear king, they embraced him and spoke as follows. Here are the demigods. Ready? They, okay. They gave him a nice embrace. Right. Beloved Vishvarup, may there be all good fortune for you. We, the demigods. Okay. That's the blessing right there, right? They offered blessing. Like, you're a young guy. May there be all good fortune for you. We, the demigods. They called themselves demigods, I wonder have come <laughs> to your ashram as your guests. Okay. Please try to fulfill our desires according to time, to the time since we are on the level of your parents. Okay. So Do you now realize- they've, they've come to a a junior, but treating him like a senior in one sense, right? Well, I would say that actually what they're, I say they're treating him like a junior. They need his help, 
but they're making it really clear that we're your seniors. Acha, acha, acha. You know, so they're saying, we've first of all, they say we've come here as your guests. And there's a whole etiquette in how you greet a guest. With guests, sure. He's got to right? take care of them. You got to take care of them. You got to fulfill their desires. You got to whatever they want. That's a strong etiquette. It's still that is one day. thing we've really lost in this culture, I feel. We never had it in this culture. Or maybe we did. Well, I, I don't think know, we but... did have it. There used to be time when people would come over, drop by. Oh, okay. That's you're talking in. about the. Uh, even I think even in Europe, out the people coffee still. Cake in the sink. Breaking out the, co the Enterman's coffee cake for the guest. Yeah. But I think uh, even in Europe still, they're sort of like, you were in my, you were in town and you didn't stop by. They're like hurt. Is it like now? that? And in India, the, yeah. And in India, it's like, you come to, you don't even know me. You're inviting me in your house. I've had that happen to me many times. In many India. times. Come on, take all. I, I was like me. I'm with like 35 people. You're like, yeah, oh, everybody, Bring everybody in. We're going <laughs> to sit down. We've got, we've got all the time in the world for you. Yeah, this is like, I don't want any. I, it's like, I don't want anyone coming I'm so wrong. We get upset if our mom drops by. Mom, what are you doing? I got a whole day plan. You, didn't call. you gotta you gotta at least text me from the driveway. <laughs> oh Christian. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We and it drop by. It was there was sir, you know, you're right. And you and I talked about this when we were kids. If the phone rang while dinner was going on, it was not only like don't answer it, but it's kinda like who the hell would call at six PM? It's dinner right. time. You know, that was right. for real. You know, my dad it's, used to just take it off the hook and leave it off the hook. Yeah, no. And now we don't even eat dinner together. And if we did, we wouldn't be able to stop scrolling through our phones. You know, it's yeah, so, so that was etiquette. You know, yeah. you wouldn't ring someone's doorbell during dinner time. Really, it's like, hey, it's dinner time. You know. Mm. Yeah, what's happening to what's this happening? world? I sound like an old man. <laughs> what's you happening to man. this world? So, 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 I am so, an old man. <laughs> so, so the demigods, so the demigods, they're saying one, they're saying, Hey, we're your guests here. And you know, the deal with when a guest comes over, you're supposed to give them whatever they want. And they're also yeah. saying, please fulfill our desires according to, to the time. Since we are on the level of your parents, we're senior to you. So they're right? sort of like, they sort of like, um, they're trying to pin extorting him, him. extorting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what's it's not a on. good way to not, approach a guru. It, as I read it, it seems a little awkward how they're, you know, they're trying to manipulate etiquette for their benefit. Yeah, been there, done that. It, that's what, a, that's what, that's, what that's the someone that's attached. Someone that's attached is doing that. You know, what does the purport say about this? Oh, let's take a look. Um, the demi, there is no purport. Oh, okay. All right. Continuing on then. Um, oh, Brahmana, <laughs> the highest duty of a son, even though he has sons of his own mm -hmm. is to serve his parents and what to speak of the son who is a brahmachari. So he, they're really setting up like, look, yeah. you're younger than me start and we're older serve us. Yeah, he could say, you know, you're not my parents. And said, well, actually, everybody that's like on the same <laughs> age of your parents, you need to see as your parents. That's our etiquette. By the right? way, it is a nice etiquette, though. It is a nice etiquette, you know? Yes, but they're just trying to use it. They're, for they're manipulating group. the etiquette. I get it. Because really, they should be coming and just be full of feelings of affection and yeah. wanting to give to him. But they're just mm. this is attached. This is a person that hasn't developed wisdom yet. They got their attachments and they're trying to manipulate things. And it always brings us anxiety and embarrassment. Mm -hmm. Etiquette. So good. Um, I like the fact that like uh, men who are driven by lower passions, they, they, the, the, the etiquette is you address any woman as your mother. You see them as your mother. And you dress if they're younger, you see them as your daughter. Oh, my daughter. Oh, my mother. Hello, mother. Hello, Mataji. Isn't oh. that nice? Yeah. It's, Although it's, most of them don't like, like it nowadays. <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> Hello, mother. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, they it also they, awkward for us. There's so, oh, there's also like um I like they, Davey though. They like what, Davey. What do you, no, you don't walk around calling women goddesses. You can. Certainly you can. Not unless it's your wife. Davy Dossi. Vivek Prajapati, tell him the etiquette. You can't just walk around saying, oh, goddess. You can. Oh, goddess. Yeah, I could say Mara Davy. I could do that. 
I don't think so. I don't think you just walk around calling them up. <laughs> See, already the beer says up. I don't like to be calling a mother. No, no, you know what? Don't we like don't it. like you know. Well, there's another Dadu. I mean, it's a very affectionate way. You say, "Hey, grandfather," but Dadu. we don't like being called old. Is Dadu grandfather or uncle? I think it's like a grandfather. Vivek Prajapati, help us here. Dadu G. <laughs> um, Vivek says, "I guess goddess is also used in a pervy See? sense." Yeah, it is a per. I think it is a little pervy, depending Perf on the circumstance. What do you mean by pervy? <laughs> like per oh, pervert, perverty. I don't know if that's what he meant. Mother. Gen Genevieve. What do I call Genevieve now when I see her? Um, Maybe. Sister. Like we say. Prabhu. I, I say Prabhu. Then people get offended by Prabhu. You could say Prabhu, but nobody's ready for that. No it's one's like... ready. We're not going to go there. <laughs> okay. I, don't, I, I call everybody Prabhu master. All right. Some ladies I know, some yeah. Ru Russian devotees or East. They get mad. They say, I like to oh, say Davy. There's no problem with that. It's honoring. I'm not going to say Davy. I'm not going to. I'm not asking you to. OK, you're going to walk around India calling women Davy. That's a per that's pervy. It's not pervy. I don't know Mara what you mean by no. pervy. All right, come on, let's continue. OK, goddess. Should I, maybe I should just call you God. If you like. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> <laughs> David Dossi, Shamakarishi says, Shamakarishi says, David Dossi. Didi. Oh, Didi. No, you're oh, spelling it wrong. That, that means Didi. like D I D I. That auntie. means like auntie. Yeah. D I D I. It's like Dadu and Didi. You see, Dadu, I think, is uncle. Or the... Didi. What's up with our what about dog? Didi. My Take dog it, is losing his mind. He's. <laughs> All right, come on. Let's keep going. Dear son, uh, the Acharya, the spiritual master who teaches. The Acharya, the spiritual master who teaches all the Vedic knowledge and gives initiation by offering the sacred thread, is the personification of all the Vedas. Okay. Similarly, the father personifies Lord Brahma. Okay, hold, brother, hold one second, Raghunath, I, and I'm sorry to interrupt you because that's bad etiquette. Continue <laughs> Please on. forgive me. I God. forgive you. I forgive you, God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, but, um, but here... We I'm get this, what we're gonna, what we're about to get in in these two verses. They put these two texts together, twenty nine and thirty, mm -hmm. is a type of. It's trying to give us the vision to see the sacred everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, and it's going to tell us how to see the guru, how to see the father, how to see the brother, how to see the mother, how to see the sister, how to see the guests. Uh, how to see all living entities you see them as sacred like if you hold well as we read them we'll, 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 we'll play it out let's go go ahead all right the acharya the spiritual master who teaches all vedic knowledge and gives initiation by offering the sacred thread is the personification of all the vedas similarly a father personifies personifies lord brahma a brother king indra a mother the planet earth and a sister mercy the interesting mercy eh? Yeah, I the wish, guest. I, I, we could use more commentary on that. Yeah, go ahead. A guest personifies dharmic principles. An invited guest personifies the demigod Agni. Interesting. Okay, got a fire. And the all the living entities personify Lord Vishnu, the supreme personality of Godhead. Okay, you know that Agni one. Yeah, how do you get that? Well, I don't know, but you know, I know that within the, the the Vedas, there are a lot of prayers and offerings unto Agni and the different rituals, and of course, the fire is there. You know, Swaha, you offer into the fire. I assume it's it's just kind of connecting us to that idea of Vedic sacrifice. You know, trying to, when when, a, when an uninvited guest comes to your house, put yourself in that same mood that you would be when with the same respect um, that you would have when you're offering you know, making offerings into the fire sack during your rituals. Like when you're doing your rituals, you know, you've, you've done everything, right? You've, you've, you've bathed, you put on nice clothes, you've sat down, you've done a little pranayama, you're surrounded by brahmanas. You're in a state of mind, like, let me honor this fire, you know? And I think what they're saying here is that uninvited guest comes to your door. You snap back into that mode, you know? Mm -hmm. You snap back into that, that yeah. mode where someone sacred has just come to my door uninvited i didn't seek them out 
God has sent this person here. Let me snap into this kind of um, more formal uh, state of mind where I, I, I'm seeing someone is very special and sacred. That's anyone that comes to your door. Yeah. What do they call it? Titi Narayan? Atiti. Atiti Narayan. A you treat... The get, you treat anyone who comes to your door like they're Lord Vishnu himself. That's yeah. how I treat the UPS guy when he comes. I'm like, you are Vishnu. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you offer him anything to He's eat? He's like, what are you talking about? Maybe you should offer him a little something. Hey, would you like something to eat? I should. Would you I like should. me to bathe your feet? You've been walking for so long. Let me bathe your feet. <laughs> Let me undress <laughs> you and bathe Got a weird, you. Some weird then, guys oh. over there on that farm. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me take off your clothes, bathe you, offer you a fresh set of clothes, perfume you, give you mouthwash, and then offer incense and a lamp to you. A little tumbulum, perhaps? <laughs> flower, flower garland. And here's Prashad. <laughs> All right. So, so he's going right down the line. They're, let they're me going fan right you with a yak tail. <laughs> yak tail. Whisk. <laughs> um, whisk. <laughs> So, so they went down the line. Guru is the personification of the Vedas, right? They're carrying all the Vedic knowledge. They're, they're, they're deli they, they give us access to it. Let me honor it. Just like I'd put the, the Vedas on a, pla on, a, on a pulpit, you know, like on a suitable altar, you know? Hmm. The father's like Lord Brahma, you know? That's the wise one that everybody respects and everyone goes to, you know? The brother's like King Indra, you know? Pious person must be respected. Mother like planet Earth. Right, the Earth is providing everything for us. All of our nourishments coming from Earth. Mother has to be respected. Mm -hmm. Sister is like mercy. Interesting. It's mm -hmm. like it's some special gift you have in life that you don't even deserve. Right? Isn't that interesting? There was a band called Sisters of Mercy. Sisters of Mercy. Yeah. I think there's some also orders of n nunneries that go by that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The Sisters of Mercy. But yeah, so I guess, you know, like mercy, in other words, yes, yeah, something that I didn't deserve, some special blessing that I didn't deserve in my life. That's the sister. Okay. And then the guest personifies Dharma. And by that, you know, maybe they even mean like, as if Yamara showed up, you know, like, you know, the, 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 you know, you really, you were going to make sure you were respectful to the guest. And the, the um, oh, it says the invited guest or the uninvited guest is like um, Agni. Invited? invited invited guest is like agni and then Uninvited but then it wraps guests. it up you know a lot okay. of times like the crucial one comes at the end all living entities they personified lord vishnu right every living body is a, a walking temple of lord vishnu and bhagavatam is again and again you know encouraging us to see the divinity the dignity the spiritual potential in every living being you know mm. and in and, and spiritual life um it's not some superficial, you know, external kind of the clothes that you put on or the phrases that you use or, or you know, the, it, it has to, it really has to do with this, you know, trying to see beyond the spiritual superficiality and understanding that spirituality has to do with how you honor the, the divine within every living being, how you really see it. You know, mm. then that's the fundamental spiritual principle. And if we're not seeing that, we're not really practicing spirituality. It's you know? the sentiment behind it. Yeah. Yeah. But, yes. you know, again, like, in other words, what I'm saying, it's not all crystals and dream catchers and, and not to put those dream things catchers down. Dream catchers work, but, by the way. I know, I'm sure they do. <laughs> Prabhupada writes this in the commentary. Mm -hmm. He says, uh, according to the moral instructions of Chanya, Chanakya Pandit, Chanakya Pandit, Chanakya Pandit, Atmavat Sarvabhuteshu. Chanakya Watch. Pandit was sort of the Emily Post of the Vedic culture, yeah, but a little heavier. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a little heavier. <laughs> uh, he says, one should observe all living beings to be on the same level as oneself. Right. In other words, nobody's lower than me, he's saying. This means that no one should be neglected as inferior. There you go. I'm thinking like Prabhupada. Wow. Because Paramatma is seated in everyone's body. Everyone right. should be respected as a temple of the Supreme Personality of God. This first describes the different ways in which one should respect a guru, a father, a brother, a sister, a guest, and so on. There's mm -hmm. etiquette there. This etiquette is to help us, uh, 
develop the right sentiments, help us keep what is sacred in life that sacred so that we don't become callous to it. Mm -hmm. You know, so that we really, every living being is sacred. You mm -hmm. know, can we see that? Can we, can we move through the world um, carrying that, that, uh, that sacred vision? That's spiritual life. That's in this, from that platform, you can deeply absorb yourself in remembrance of Krishna, his qualities, his name, his form, his pastimes, and all that stuff starts to open up. But if we don't have that, then we're kind of callous and dull to everything, you know? Callous and dull. Callous and dull. All right. All don't right. say that because we're going to bring Mara. Seven. Mara, <laughs> she's the opposite of callous and dull. Sensitive. She's sensitive and warm. And sharp. Sharp like a needle. <laughs> like a knitting needle. Thanks. Like a knitting needle. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> kind of. Yes. Uh, I think thanks. Do you keep a weapon by your bed? You're asking me? Yeah, you. No, I don't keep a weapon by my bed. Two types of men in this world. Time to keep a weapon by the, the paranoid and the, and the sane. You once took out that weapon on Mallory when you forgot she was coming you, home late at night. You pulled a weapon on Mallory? Yes, you yes, did. I did. Oh, it wasn't a gun me. or a firearm or anything, but still. Bravo. <laughs> Paranoid and the same. <laughs> <laughs> Two kind of men in this world. Roganoff is going <laughs> to give me his macho thing. The alpha male and the beta. <laughs> is that where you're going? <laughs> Two types of fish. Okay. All right, Mayor. What you got? Et etiquette serves a higher purpose. Etiquette serves a high purpose. That's what yes, it for. does. It should. It should. Yeah, it's meant to. Respect your seniors to open the channel of grace. Open the door for your seniors too. Open the door. That's a nice etiquette. Opening the door for someone. Open the door. That could be a t-shirt. Open the door. Always open the door. Always open the door. Fathers used to teach their sons this kind of thing, didn't they? Like always do this. Always when you shake a guy's hand, shake it firm and look him in the eye and, and all that. Kind I hate of stuff. when people. I agree with the firm handshake, but I hate when they like try to crush your hand. Well, that, nobody it's does like, come that. Come on, that's, that's not right. I know. <laughs> Poor etiquette. Poor etiquette. That's <laughs> they've overstepped it there. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Treat your guests as God. Guests are pests. <laughs> Just Excuse kidding. Me? Guests, are, guests God. are God. <laughs> guests are the best. Guests yeah. are the best pests. <laughs> <laughs> Don't manipulate etiquette because of your attachments. Okay. Don't manipulate. No, unless no, Henry you're this, using unless you're using Plato, then manipulate it very well. Henry put up this uh, give up your seat on the bus for an elder. Do you do that, Ragnar? Of course I would. Pregnant woman? Yes. Any woman? Yep. You sure? You marry so they're like, mm -hmm. she totally would. <laughs> <laughs> if you're on the subway, I'm on the you subway. Seat, I tend to there's... not look up. <laughs> I've been trained by my father. Never look up. Never look in someone's eyes on the subway. Definitely elders and pregnant women. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it must be done. It, to break that is it, you lose all kinds of piety. It's just like all your good karma is just like draining out. Yes. Yes. Okay, go on. Uh, see the divinity and spiritual potential in every living being. See the divinity. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. What else? <laughs> Okay. The fundamental spiritual principle is to honor the divine within everyone. I, I like that. My divine light honors your divine light, Kostuba. Mine to you as well, Ragnar. And unto you and unto me. And back and forth again and again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like this one. This one's short. Yeah. Keep it sacred. Keep it sacred. Keep it sacred. That that there's your t shirt. Keep it sacred. Okay, what else? And this is kind of hold it. That's kind of like keep it real. Like this is still keep better. Keep it real. Right? Make yeah. it funky. Keep it sacred. <laughs> keep it sacred. We can say that like when we when we when we kind of um are departing from each other. Keep it sacred. Yo, keep it sacred. Yo, bro. keep it sacred. Yeah. Get a, how about get a life? Anybody ever say that? To you? <laughs> that's very different. <laughs> <laughs> get a life. That was such an insult. Get a job. <laughs> How many times have you heard that one? Oh man, you got into your books. You're gonna hear that one. Get a life. It's, it's I have such a, life. a put down. <laughs> you don't think this is a life? You mean 
you're right. I should get a life. This sucks. <laughs> All right. Mara, what's the last one? He's lost. And wash and? the feet of the UPS driver. Wash, wash the feet of the Yeah. Treat the US. Treat the U. Oh, oh my God. Treat the UPS driver. As, as Lord Vishnu himself. Offer food to him. Eat his remnants. You know what Prabhupada boots. said is the duty of the married people? What? The Grihastas? To wash the feet of the mailman? He was asked this question. He gave mail, the same answer mail three person, times. They, mail being? Well, they said every time you're ready to eat, you're supposed to go outside and ring a bell or yell out to everyone. Hey, everybody, we're about to eat over here. If anybody's hungry, please come. In every direction. Yeah. It wouldn't work where we live. The houses are too far apart. Prisha! <laughs> Try it, though. <laughs> Never know. <laughs> the sheep come. Yeah, the animals The sheep come. come and they, they know we have food. They're just coming out. You can ask uh, Catherine A. Oh, there's Catherine A right now. She's surfing or something. Wow, it looks like she's like in Mayapur and the Gunga right now. Lower up. Oh, everybody, thanks for joining us. Dean Kostuba, Mara. We're going to have like the mini pillow fight on the plane with those little mini pillows they give us. Is Catherine A coming today? She comes later. No, she comes later. Yeah, she's going to meet us in Varanasi. So today's the day. No show tomorrow, everybody. You can't, but what are we going to do without this show? Going to travel? <laughs> travel? What's Why? everybody else going to do? Don't you look at everybody else and see what we're going to do? What they... Timothy Tucker says, have a good flight! I want to see... Stay sacred. See you in good Delhi, etiquette. says Martine. I want to see good airplane etiquette from you today, Ragnar. I've got the best airplane. I'm the guy who starts the fight in the plane. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a. I wonder if that was always common, or if it seems common because people always videotape it now. Yeah, it's not common right now. Well, it, I've I been on lots wonder, of flights. I I've never if it's seen a newer thing. I don't wonder if it's a newer thing. It is a newer thing. But you don't know that because people weren't filming everything. You like those like videos where, like, they that, show like, someone on a plane that refuses to get off, even though like they're doing, yeah. And then they got to bring the police in, and you still I love it. Love when the cops come <laughs> in and march them off. Get out of here, everybody! Like the whole <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> but now, if I got kicked off the plane, would you come off with me, or would you be like, "See ya"? Well, <laughs> what, what's at me in Delhi? <laughs> <laughs> Well, what would you have? It depends, like, if you had deserved it or not. <laughs> the Stuba wants to sit next to me and Mara. Well, you're my friends. Oh, we're not even sitting next to each other? No. It stinks. Oh, you see? Now you're all alone. <laughs> now you want to find someone next to you. I'll make friends with anybody. You got the I'm middle really seat, too. I'm really friendly on planes. I make like best friends with the people sitting next to me. If you want a nice, quiet plane ride, do not sit next to Rockin' Capo. I will talk your little ear off. Like you'll sit Where next you to going? an Indian lady. What are you lady. into? What do you do? Let me tell you about the Baka Begina. You'll sit it's... next to an Indian lady and she'll say, and why are you wearing this shirt with such a deep scoop? It's a very, very deep scoop. 